Welcome back to the Vintnerd. Thanks for watching. And uh, this time I'm going to open up some boxes. I, I've been busy for a couple months and this stuff is piled up. I ordered some parts for some uh, retro projects and uh, some things for the newer computers like the Coco and the TI-99 that I got a hold of. Uh, I can remember mostly what's in these boxes, but I think there's going to be a couple surprises and I uh, thought I'd share and uh, let's get into it and get these opened up. Okay, first things first, uh, I actually already opened this one. This is an Indus GT disk drive. Uh, pretty good physical shape. Uh, I'm not actually sure if it's running correctly yet. Uh, I did not get a power supply with it, so I'll have to uh, cobble one together. Uh, but uh, I got this and also the SRAM uh, charger for Indus uh, GT drive uh, from TFHH. Uh, or a uh, Jurgen. Uh, this, you put this in the drive, it upgrades the memory in the drive, and you can run a CPM operating system on your Atari through your Indus GT disk drive. So uh, that's why I grabbed this to give that a try, and uh, we'll see how that works out in a future video. And speaking of drives, I can almost guess what this one is. Again, it's been like a couple months, kind of a whirlwind, a lot of stuff going on. Let's see if I remember this right. Eh, packing job's not bad. Oh no, I guessed this wrong. Okay, and uh, let's just put that over there. This is a Model 100 Radio Shack TRS-80. Candy. Now I have bought quite a few of these because uh, I've been repairing them, making them whole again. And this one looked in pretty good shape. Let me see. Oh, good thing they left the memory switch on for the battery that's probably leaking inside. One of these I ordered had a bonus ROM in it. And it is not this one. So I believe there's another one in here. At least there should be. <clears throat> Let's put this aside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run out of space. Uh, wow, this is like Christmas morning. What's next? What do we got? This is, let me guess on, oh, is this, for the Texas Instruments or the Coco? Yes, okay. This is an SD card reader for, should be the color computer, Tandy Coco. Do, 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 do. No, no, TI-99. I bought one for the Coco and one for the uh, TI-99. I've got that right. Let's see, I've got that handy here. So like the Fujinet on the Atari where you can put an SD card in, this, instead of getting the uh, program cartridges, I can slide this right in here, put in a full-size SD card, that's interesting and load in uh, some software on this. So I don't have any other accessories for this computer here. So this will allow me to start uh, exploring some software on this. And let's just place this down here. Oh, okay. This is an interesting, well, interesting box. I have kind of a, affinity for uh, light pens and uh, future uh, plans for a video on that and I wasn't sure this might be homemade I bought this off eBay from Germany Ratho Hamburg it says somebody probably made this uh, at home and uh, I had done the same thing uh, decades ago 
where uh, some of the magazines would have instructions for making your own light pen at home. And uh, it's going to be fun finding out how well that works. Um, like I said, I've got a few different light pens and light guns. I'm going to plan a video and try that stuff off uh, uh, off of regular TV. It won't work on an LCD panel. It needs to see the, uh, the light. This from Retro Rewind. This is going to be... If that was the color computer, no, sorry, TI-99, this is the SD card interface for the Coco. Yep, Coco SDC. Floppy disk drive emulator for Tandy color computers. Well, let's put that there. And I have that right here as well. So same thing with the TI-99. I've never had a Texas Instrument TI-99. I've never had a Coco uh, computer, and I have no accessories for them. So I grabbed this. Oh, this also uses a, a full-size SD card. So that goes right into the program pack slot, right? That goes right in. There we go. And now I can load up some software on this. Uh, some of the first software, I'd like to do some diagnostic software uh, to make sure... Uh, everything seems to be working on uh, these two units when I boot them up, but uh, I'd like to run it through the paces and see what happens. Okay, let's uh, gently place this aside. <clears throat> uh, that's it for SD card uh, readers, uh, at least from what I remember. Always try to be careful. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is the second Model 100. And um, I'm sure I've said this before, I'm, I'm not a collector. I don't just buy these and put them on a shelf. Uh, and that's fine if you do, eh, it's not my thing. Uh, do like to uh, work with them, repair them, bring them back to life. And let's see if this is the one, oh, we got somebody uh, printed instructions for probably connecting to a disk drive or something. Let's see if this has that bonus ROM in it. Oh, well, it does have a bonus ROM, but not the one I was expecting. Interact. I am not familiar with that. Uh, I'll have to look that up. Interesting. If you uh, buy Model 100s or 102 or 200s, it's kind of fun because uh, there's the space where they, you can put extra ROMs, and people sell them, and they don't know they're in there. So I've collected some memory interfaces and uh, some software ROMs. So that's always a, a fun bonus. And then it comes, uh, this one came with the manual book. Let's place that on top of there. Uh, what do we got next? Okay, this, I know what it is because the packaging. Don't want to cut a cable on it though. It is uh, a controllers for multiplayer game one through four players and they use uh rj connectors to go to the box here i want to call it the breakout box but it's really the other way around and then goes into a couple joystick ports on the atari uh 8-bit computers and allows people to play some quiz games i have not uh downloaded that software yet but i'll have to get to that now and see how well these work out and it's kind of fun that you can get four players onto two joysticks since uh, after the 400 and 800, they stopped putting four joystick ports. They used those ports, those uh, wired connections. Just put that right there for other things. Uh, oh, okay. This, I know what this is. This just came in. I got my hands on uh, some Commodore 64s and then uh, also a Commodore SX64. Uh, two of them don't work, and so I went and bought a full diagnostic kit for uh, Commodore 64, Commodore C64, Commodore C128, and the Commodore SX64. So what this allows you to do is test uh, the computer, uh, disk drive, 
the uh, ports on the computer and uh, it'll you know check if memory and things like that are working well and the keyboard connectors and such so that's going to really help in diagnosing uh, issues I've got with a couple of Commodores now usually I do um, fix these things up and then uh, resell them but uh, I'm gonna gonna keep the SX64 that's the uh, Commodore luggable uh, if you remember it, uh, whether you're an Atari guy or Commodore or uh, whatever, uh, the Commodore uh, SX64 was a nice multi-pound luggable that uh, you can uh, take it with a little built-in 5-inch color screen. The Ataris tried to get to that point, but nev never really happened. Kind of, kind of bummed on that. Moving along. Oh, okay. A couple Atari floppy drives, the SS 354, uh, two of those. I have to do some uh, hopefully retro braiding on that plastic and clean the drives up and see if I uh, if it's going to work correctly. I'll have to. Um, I don't have uh, a power supply or cables for both of these. I do have a set of power supply uh, for one that I can uh, try this out on. But we'll see if we get that working. And I haven't done any Atari ST. Oh, if I didn't say it, that's Atari ST 16-bit computers. I haven't done any of that on the channel yet. But I do have plans to. Because after the Atari 8-bits, I went and moved into the Atari 16-bit uh, world with the Atari STs. But I haven't used those in quite a while. And that is what's in here. Uh, okay. Atari 1040 STF. F, uh, because it's got the floppy drive built in. And cartridge port, MIDI ports, built in power supply. If you uh, want to get into the Atari STs, uh, I have uh, three of them. This is actually the third one I've picked up. Uh, I'm going to repair a couple and keep one of them. But I have the ones uh, with the built-in floppies and uh, the power, power supply. Because what happens if you get uh, one of the 1040 STs or 520 STs or 260 XT, if you've got access to one of those, uh, and have an external floppy, you need a cable between the two and you need a power supply, special power supply for the floppy, the external floppy. And like, I got these, but I don't have the cables or power supplies and that's extra money. If you get an Atari ST with the built-in floppy and the built-in power supply, you don't need a power supply, you don't need the, uh, for the computer, you don't need a power supply for the uh, floppy, you don't need a data cable for the floppy. So there's three things right there you can save your money on if you get it all built in. Now, this keyboard's pretty yellowed. Uh, definitely be re retro brighting that. Good thing summer's uh, here. Although in California, it gets sun year round, usually. But it is much better in the summer. Okay, two boxes left. And uh, let's save that one. Let's save that one for last. Um, one of these is going to be, what is this? I do not remember what this one is. Oh, it's another Model 100. Now, if you watch eBay enough, you can, you can get these at a good price, especially if they're untested. Usually the battery inside dies and the thing won't boot and so forth. Just needs some repair. And, uh, this one needs a little cleaning. East Shore Center, wherever that is. Okay, good thing we got Velcro in there. Okay, let's see if this has that bonus ROM that I was expecting. Nope. Okay, no bonus ROMs in this one. And let's turn off the memory switch there. I didn't check the other ones, but yeah, no batteries in there. Looks pretty clean in there. That's a good sign. Okay, so 
This should be... Okay, I'm a little worried. This is an Atari XE GS keyboard case. But I didn't buy the case. What I did buy was the controller board, which isn't that big. I wonder if there's a, another bonus in here. So what I did buy from this seller was just this controller board. Because I uh, have some project ideas uh, for an external Atari uh, keyboard to plug into the XEGS. And uh, I was just gonna kind of make up a board, figure out uh, how to do it, breadboard it. But then this popped up on eBay, pretty cheap. So I went ahead and grabbed it. And then the seller said he had the other parts. Ooh, definitely. He said, he said he had the other parts and he was just gonna throw it in the box and ship it. And that was very nice of him. Um, and I can see why, well, it came with bonus hair. So, uh, that's nice. We'll just put that over there. So that's gonna be fun. Some extra parts. Maybe somebody needs a help key. Uh, okay, so uh, that's it for unboxing products. Um, uh, none of these were uh, donations other than what this uh, seller threw in here for that. Uh, so I purchased all these uh, to get some uh, retro projects going. And that's going to be some uh, future videos not too far down the line. So uh, take a look at the channel. Go ahead and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And uh, join me next time. Thanks. Yeah.